morning scope here i am again uh this has to be the most i have ever skipped scope i skipped scoped within um a week period uh ever since i have been on this is a lot for me um but there's just been uh i've, I've just been in a season where god has just been really um just turning a lot of things over my heart it's been a it's been a season of contemplation and um god has just been uh just just downloading revelation into me um and just causing me to ponder and to consider some things and so um i as a as a result of some recent events i'll say that recent events hey arian bless you um as a as a result of um some recent events i'll put it like that i have found myself uh doing a lot of thinking and contemplating and pondering and meditating about a hey hey uh pastor p how you doing my girl um and just pondering about life and specifically life from god's standpoint of view hey hey there how you doing chosen one bless you um so so pondering uh life from god's standpoint of view and um i began to think about um those of us who god has blessed to accomplish some things and um looking at those accomplishments and then uh there's a verse of scripture matthew 7 and i believe it's 35 it says uh, uh wisdom is justified of her children and to begin thinking about how um we could see the wisdom of a thing based on what it produces uh, but sometimes you just can't look at just what it produces or you can't just necessarily look at the the the, the, the thought process if you would and 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 what it produced but you want to look at the outcome and the results from a total standpoint of view of everything that goes along with it. And some people will produce things, but in the process, they'll leave carnage behind them. And they'll get to this top, but on their way to the top, they have stepped on so many people and they have created so many problems. And that for me becomes a character issue. So you could be gifted, you can accomplish some things, you can get some things done. Uh, you can make some things happen, uh, but when you have come to the place of producing your product, the process through which you produce the product is so messy that there's a lot of messiness as associated with it. And so now we come to this thing of considering uh, what I said, um, character and giftedness, can the two peacefully coexist? And there's, there's many schools of thought about character and giftedness. There's many schools of thought about character and giftedness. There, there are the extremes, and then, of course, there's the balance. So let's first of all look at the extremes. Um, there are, there's one extreme that says, you know, you can operate in your gift and your gift and your giftedness, and there need not be any consideration of character whatsoever. Okay? And then there's the opposite extreme that says, as long as you have character, gifting doesn't matter. And I want to suggest to you that both of them are um, just, just not, at the very least, they're not balanced. And if I may go so far as to say, they're probably not right either. Okay. Um, the two are necessary. Hey, number two, the two are necessary and they are essential. Okay. And they require uh, a degree of being involved with um, simultaneously, whatever it is, whatever it is that you're dealing with, okay. First of all, let's 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 look at this. God gives both to all of us. God gives all of us character, and He gives all of us giftedness. Um, you you come here with a character. A character, or your character is who you are when nobody is looking. Okay. Now God gives us pure character. Okay. Um, from the standpoint of how He has created us. Now, Adam and Eve came, and because they sinned. Now the Bible tells us we're we're we're, uh, we're born in sin and we're shaped in iniquity, okay? And so that means character. We come here with a dysfunctional character because of the nature of sin. But the way God has made us, okay, we do have the potential to have good character. And and and, and watch this now in Genesis the fourth chapter, when Cain slew his bro his his brother Abel, God rebuked him. And one of the things God said to him. Sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is to, um, to, to overwhelm you. I'm paraphrasing it. But then God said something very interesting. He said, but you must master it. Now, that's interesting because at the beginning, 
of Genesis, way before Jesus comes into the sin, well, I mean, onto the scene, excuse me, way before we have the proliferation of sin and it have, has taken its full course, and at the very beginning stages, uh, at the introductory stages of sin, uh, okay, someone's asked me to speak up some more, okay. At the, at the very beginning and introductory stages of sin, uh, of sin, God says to Cain, he says, um, sin is crouching at your door and it desires to control you, but you must master it. Now, God never tells us to do anything that we cannot do. So I find it interesting that before Jesus comes on the scene, before he, 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 he lives um, sinlessly, he dies selflessly, and then he rises triumphantly, sealing the work of salvation, that here God is telling Cain in the beginning, you must master it. God never tells us to do anything that we cannot do, all right? So that's, that says to me that even though we're born with tainted character, we have the potential, okay, to operate in pure character, and upright character, and, holy, and, and in holiness. And now on this side of the covenant, you and I have no excuse because we have Jesus as the example, and we have the Holy Spirit as the empowering agent to allow us to carry out Jesus' example, okay? So character is essential. But then at the same time, God creates everybody with at least one gift. There is something that you have what I call uh, an aptitude to naturally to naturally do um, that God has given you, okay? Um, for instance, one of the things that I just have an aptitude to do is to just make music, okay? I didn't have to uh, go to school per se to learn how to do it. It was just a gift. And in the right environment, that gift was birthed, that gift was unveiled, that gift was uncovered, and it flourished, okay? And then I discovered there, there, there are other gifts that God has given me. And even our aptitude gifting has uh, multiple, uh, multiple dimensions to it. There are just things that come along with it um, that, are, that allow us to just accomplish some great things, okay? Your gift is essential if you're going to fulfill your purpose, okay? Your gift is essential if you're going to fulfill your purpose. If you're going to reach the destination, um, hey, 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 Durst, how, how you doing? Uh, um, if you're going to reach the destination that God has determined for you, then you need the gift to operate in it so that you can get there and it uncovers your purpose. And so we have here the necessity of character and giftedness. What I think happens is the problem comes in when we don't understand, um, better now with word, uh, thank you for your sharing. Okay, thank you. Um, um, hey, good morning, Holland Nance. God bless you. Okay, the problem is we don't when we don't understand the proper balance between the two. Okay, that's where the issue comes in, when we don't understand the proper balance between the two. Hey, EBS, Latrice, God bless you. And so that's why they can, that's why they often do not peacefully coexist, because it's not that they can't, it's not that we don't understand how they are supposed to. And may I submit to you, from my personal experience, things that I've been through myself, and then things that I've observed with each other, the, 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 over, the, the, the overarching uh, majority of the weight okay, needs to be placed on character, okay? Let me say that again. It needs to be placed on character. I submit to you that it is important that you and I work on the perfecting of our character more than we work on the polishing of our gift. Or, you know, a gift could be a craft that you do, a skill or a talent or ability, okay? So, again, the greater weight of responsibility. Now, let me say this. Let me make this caveat. I'm not saying that you neglect your gift, okay? Because Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift that is within you. Oh, my goodness. I feel a little something happening here. I don't want to get preachy. I don't want to get preachy. But I just I want to talk to you, okay? He told him, stir up the gift that is within you, okay? So you don't neglect your gift. But what, the, what, what needs to happen is you want to put more time, you want to invest more time in the perfecting of your character. And you perfect your character by making sure that you are aligning it with the character of Jesus Christ. You spend more time in the perfecting of your character than you do in the polishing of your gift or the polishing of your craft. And, and when you do that, the two can exist. Now, there are many examples, beloveds. There are many examples in the scriptures of, of individuals who placed their giftedness above their character and individuals who put emphasis on their character beyond their gift, okay? And so let's get to the meat of the matter, okay? This is where we get. Let's, let's, let's start with the bad news first. One of the individuals that comes first and foremost to mind is a person who put more into his gift than his character is Lucifer, and we now know him as Satan, okay? I mean, he was so gifted 
that his very gifting was his anatomy. Okay, and in, 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 in the scriptures it says that timbrels and pipes was built in him. Okay, it said this. Um, the two passages of scripture that talk about Satan, Isaiah, the 14th chapter, and Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. When you get a chance, go check it out. And one of those passages says that, that his, his, his giftedness was so much a part of who he, who he is. Um, hey, darling, bless you. His giftedness was so much a part of who he was that it was a, a, his very anatomy. And, and, and so that when he moved, music emanated from him. When he moved, music emanated. That's one of the ways you can interpret it, that. And what happened is he got so caught up, in, and there was other giftings he, he, he had. Apparently, he was a very, very attractive and appealing individual to look at, the way the language of the Scripture describes him. I mean, he was gifted to the hilt. But what happened? He put his gifting above his, above his character. He did not subject his character to the person of God. I mean, this man was God's personal minister of music. It, those of you who are ministers of music and in music ministry, you know it gets no better than that. To actually be working for and along with God directly, oh my goodness. That's why he can't tell me anything, because he blew one of the best jobs you can have in the universe. All right, but I'm di I digress. I digress. I digress. Okay? And so then, because his character was so tainted and so neglected that he got jealous and envious got out of balance and all out of kilter and said, I'm going to exalt myself above God and I will be like the Most High. Okay, the fact that he said like the Most High, he already condemned his, his endeavor and his efforts to begin with because he was saying that he couldn't be him or he couldn't be, be, be beyond him. He tried to be like him. And, and may I suggest to you, one of the things you come to understand very, very quickly about character Okay, when you when you submit your giftingness to your giftedness to your character, is you come to understand the best you that you can be is you and not anybody else. And character will put that first and foremost. Character will not be well what somebody else has, what somebody else does, but character learns how to have a self a, a healthy self-esteem with its own gifted with its own giftedness and says, you know what? My giftedness is just as important as the next person's. Not more important, but just as important. Okay? That's that's key. That's that's key and critical right there. Okay. That's key and critical right there. Okay. My character says that my giftedness is just as important as the next person's, but is not more important than the next person's because we all make a a balanced contribution to the entire mosaic of creation as far as how God has created us. And there are things that we all bring to the table that no one else can bring to the table. All right. So character learns how to put its giftedness in its proper perspective in relation to everybody else. And that's where Lucifer messed up. Okay. He's an example of someone who worked more on his character. I mean, his gift pursued more his giftedness, put more emphasis on his giftedness as opposed to the pursuit of his character. Okay. Another one I would like to highlight to you, and there are many examples, and I would like to challenge you to go through the scriptures and see how you can see this for yourself. Another example is King Saul, King Saul, the first monarch of, 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 of Israel, okay, put more emphasis on his giftedness than his character. What was his giftedness? He was gifted with the ability to serve as Israel's first monarch. That was a gift that was given to him, okay, um, and there were other aspects of his giftedness that came along with it. Um, the scripture says he was head and shoulders uh, in height above everyone else, all right? Apparently, he had some very, very leadership uh, skills and, and abilities and giftings, okay? He was able to mobilize uh, the community of Israel when it came time for them to go against uh, those who were tormented. So he was gifted, but his character was woefully underdeveloped. And, and he made some critical mistakes as far as obeying God because his character was woefully underdeveloped. And what happened? He went too far, and the kingdom was snatched from him and given to his, given to his neighbor who was better than him, a man who was after God's own heart. And look at the, 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 the comparisons, if you would, between these, these, who, these two individuals, okay? You have Saul, who's gifted, but who does not work on character. You have David, who's gifted, but he works on character. Okay, now listen. Character doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect, because David was very imperfect, okay? David had many flaws. But look at what God said. Look at what God said in the record that he left. The Bible is God's record, okay? It is history. It is his story. Look at the testimony that God left about David in his record. He said he's a man after mine own heart. And one of the reasons why I submit to you that God loved David so much was because of the integrity that David had. What is integrity? Okay, doing the right thing even when it is inconvenient. And it was something 
about David that he would be honest and sincere, even when it was to his own damage, even when it was to his own hurt, even when it was seen to blot his own reputation. But God loved that. And God said, look, at here's a man of character. He does not place his gift in this. And David was very gifted. Okay. He was a poet. He was a songwriter. He was a musician. Okay. Bless you. Bless you, Holland. To God, to God be the glory. He was, he was a, an administrator. He was a strategist. Okay. He was a politician. Okay. He was a military strategist. I mean, the, the man, he was an actor. Okay. He was very quick to repent. Yes, he was. Hey, Sharon, um, you, you changed your picture. Okay. Bless you. I like it. Okay. He, he was, um, um, he was he was he was an actor. Where do you get that? First Samuel twenty first chapter. David is one of my heroes, by the way. And as a musician, I've studied him extensively. Okay, he was an actor when he went before the Philistine king. Okay, and they realized who he was. The Bible says that he feigned. The the King James version says he feigned madness. I say to you that he put on an Oscar winning. Um, he, he put on an Oscar winning performance. Okay, he put on an Oscar winning. And and they thought that he was crazy until the king said, "Get this madman out of my presence." Okay. And Anybody who has a problem with the with the artistic expression of acting, check out 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter, okay? There we go, bang. So he was very, very gifted, but he worked on his character, and even when he got caught, he didn't make excuses, he didn't justify, he didn't rationalize. He said, it's me, it's me, I'm the one, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm the culprit, okay? He put more emphasis on his character, and so we see the comparisons there between those two individuals. Now... Are there good examples, healthy, healthy examples, where things ended up very, very nicely because there was individuals who placed character beyond giftedness? And I want to say to you, yes. And let's go to the book of the beginnings, Genesis, all right? Now, help me because I feel, you, you, you got to bear with me because I'm, I'm feeling a little, I am feeling a little something happening up here. And I don't want to get churchy, but I just want to talk to you. But I do get excited about the things of God, especially when the word is brought into the mix. Let's go to Genesis, okay? And let's look at Joseph, okay? And Joseph is certainly an example example of an individual who placed emphasis on his character beyond his giftedness, okay? Um, now, some would, would argue that Joseph made a critical mistake. Hey, hey, Greenaway Emmanuel, bless you all the way from over the pond, okay? Uh, some would argue that Joseph made a critical mistake by announcing to his brothers his dream. And I tend to disagree. When I look at the sum scope of Joseph's life from Genesis 37 to chapter 50, okay, um, I, I, and see the way things um fleshed out and the way things turned out, I think it was the plan of God. Remember, I gave to you Luke the seventh chapter, the 35th verse, um, and I believe it's the 35th verse. I know it's in the seventh chapter. Um, wisdom, wisdom is justified of her children. When we look at the results, it becomes apparent that God has something in mind by Joseph announcing to his brothers his dream because, in fact, when we get down to Genesis, the 50th chapter, by the time everything was said and done, Joseph's dream turned out to be very, very true, and it turned out to be very, very real. So I don't know if that's an issue, okay? Uh, but there were some things along the way. And all along the way, Joseph's character is being tested. Joseph's character is being tested. And the two examples that I would like to present to you is first and foremost when he was with Potiphar and, and working in his house and when Potiphar's wife was sexually harassing him, okay? It's, 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 it's the Bible's first re, 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 uh, recorded case of sexual harassment on a workplace, okay? And, 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 and she's harassing him. She's harassing him. Come sleep with me. Come sleep with me. And he says, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? He understood that first and foremost because of his character character that this was a sin against God not only against and then it's against Potiphar my, my, my boss and then it's against you okay um, it's against Potiphar because he has trusted me with everything and you're his wife, okay? And then it's against you because I have no business doing this with you because you don't belong to me, okay? And his character. In another instance, his character is, is if we see his character, is because when he finally gets the chance to go before uh, Pharaoh and, and, and he gives the interpretation of the dream and he makes the recommendation, he says, listen, he says, my advice to you is that you get someone who can manage the king's business to prepare the nation to, to, to navigate these seasons of plenty and these seasons of lack. And notice, now, if I'm the person and I got the wisdom, I got the interpretation of the dream, I got the goods, I got the gift, I ain't talking about someone. I'm like, listen, put me in position because I is the one. But look at his character. Look at how much humility there was there in his character that he said, get someone who could handle this the right way. And the king, Pharaoh, looks and says, well, since you are the man who's able to interpret the dream, since you got the gift, okay, and, and, and since you had the recommendation, you are the man, I'm promoting you to be second in command behind me. Nobody else will be great. 
greater than you in the kingdom except me. I want to submit to you that there was something that Pharaoh said without saying. And he, and what he said without saying was, I recognize that you have such character in that you didn't put yourself first that I'm going to put you first. And see, that's a person of character. A person of character will, 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 will realize I don't have to promote me because who I am, if my character is driving it properly, I'm going. It, my character is going to promote me. I don't have to promote me, okay? I don't have to promote myself. My character will promote me. What I do is I operate in character and let my character push my giftedness, and that's where my promotion comes. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? Okay, so Joseph. Now let's skip on down. Now Jesus, it goes without saying, is a, is, 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 is a, 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 Jesus, it goes without saying, is a man who has the perfect balance of character and giftedness. That goes without saying. But let me just, you know, just bring us back to individuals who are a little bit more closer to our humanity. And we know that Jesus was fully God, and we know that he's fully man. But a lot of us tend to just kind of like excuse and say, okay, well, he doesn't count because he's still God. He does count, okay? But Jesus knew this, God knew this, so they gave us examples of individuals who don't necessarily have divinity operating within them. And the second example I want to give to you is Daniel. Daniel is certainly an individual who is a perfect example of us, of a person with character and giftedness. Character and giftedness. And he has the right, he has the right, um, 